Hi, welcome to the Hair Fuel YouTube channel where we talk all things hair growth, hair health and hair science. Today we're going to talk about silicones in hair care. Today we're going to cover a topic of silicones in hair care. It has been somewhat a contentious topic in the hair care industry, where hair care industry had seen a big backlash from influencers, from other brands, from customers on using silicones in their formulation. So today we're going to talk about why certain silicones are safe to use and why you probably should avoid certain types of silicones when you're shopping for your hair care products and actually diving in and mentioning certain names of silicones that are safe to use. It is important to know that the silicones that are used in hair care industry, especially those manufactured in the EU, are going through a rigorous safety assessment process. So all the silicones that you buy as a result of shopping for your hair care products are safe to use if you are located in EU. In other countries, they have different rigorous formulations and processes that we're not going to cover. So having said that, cosmetic industry has been using silicones for a variety of reasons. Specifically in hair care, it creates that slip and shine that we often see in the TV or YouTube commercials. With that, silicones also help to detangle your hair, especially those of us who have curly hair. They tend to actually swear by silicones and once they abandon that, they tend to find that their hair used to love silicones. Now, that is somewhat contentious to the curly girl hair method, whereby people are encouraged to leave silicones altogether from their hair care routine. It is interesting to mention because silicones are supposed to retain and keep the moisture in your hair by creating that plastic film around your hair shaft. Now, the issue comes in is when that film is not leaving your hair basically ever, and that causes a product buildup in your hair and in your scalp. The product buildup causes Ultimately, over time, as that product is built up in your hair cuticle, it causes your hair to be effectively suffocated from absorbing oxygen, from absorbing the moisture and all the other good stuff that your hair needs. That ultimately leads to limp hair, to hair thinning and some of the scalp matters, especially if you're not treating the product buildup, it can lead to scalp irritation and dandruff. There are two distinct types of silicones, ones that are water soluble, so those that can be easily washed off and dissolved in water. And the other type is a non-water soluble types. And this is the type that precisely causes the product buildup and as a result of which you need to use clarifying shampoo afterwards to help to get rid of the buildup. Some of the lighter buildup can be treated in natural ways by using apple cider vinegar. But generally speaking, if you're using some of the heavier silicones, if your hairspray, leave-in conditioner, leave-in conditioners especially are prime suspects of silicones. So be sure to check out the label on your conditioner, whether it has any of the silicones that are we're going to mention later on. So there are two distinct types of silicones in hair care products. One is a non-water soluble silicon. So this is the type of silicon that isn't easily solved in water. And this is the type of silicones that generally cause product buildup. We can't talk about silicones without mentioning at least briefly what is a product buildup. Product buildup is essentially what it says in the name. It is the buildup of the product that you're using in your hair cuticle and in your scalp. Now, the buildup in your hair cuticle, it means that it, the silicones that you're using in your hair care, they create this thin plastic film around your hair that is supposed to lock in moisture and keep your hair hydrated that way. But what it does, it also over time suffocates your hair and prevents it from absorbing additional moisture and oxygen, what your hair actually needs. And when it comes to buildup in your scalp, this means that the product that you're using, the silicones in your hair care, actually causes a buildup of your hair follicle, the pores and the hair follicles in your scalp that can later on lead to scalp irritation and scalp issues. That can also lead to hair growth issues, especially if your hair follicles are clogged and they basically don't have enough space to grow. So this is something to bear in mind if hair growth specifically a matter that you're particularly keen on. So how do you remove silicones from your hair? You need to use a clarifying shampoo. And that is another issue in the matter is because the clarifying shampoos normally contain very harsh surfactants. So those the kind of agents that remove that extra product buildup. And the issue is twofold. First, if you have colored hair, so if you're using any artificial 
hair dyes. If you're using clarifying shampoo, it actually penetrates your hair shaft a lot deeper and that extracts the pigment of your hair dye even more. So you actually find yourself needing to do the touch-ups of your hair coloring more often if you're using clarifying shampoo often. So that's one matter. And then the other matter is that surfactants are very drying for your hair. So not only do they remove the silicon buildup that is in your hair strand, what they also do is that they soak in all the moisture that your hair naturally needs in order to have this healthy shine. It removes it and therefore leaving you with dehydrated and limp looking hair. So in a way you're, and when you're using products with non-water soluble silicon specifically, because you need to have silicons to introduce that shine and healthy look of your hair, even though your hair may look healthy, it is not necessarily is healthy, but you need to have silicones to have this shine to your hair. And then in order to do that, you use more leave-in conditioner that has silicones in it because it kind of like, it has this instant effect. But then your hair still needs, you still need to get rid of the product buildup because that's not very good for your hair is effectively becoming suffocated as well as your scalp too. And then you turn to clarifying very intense surfactants and sulfates formulations in your shampoo in order to get rid of that buildup. And those types of shampoos and soaps, they strip your hair of all the no moisture that actually should still remain in your hair. And that leaves your hair looking dehydrated and dull. And then you again go to the shop and buy the next shampoo with the silicone so you can introduce that healthy shine that comes from just a healthy moisturized hair. So how do you leave that vicious circle? Before we jump into that, I want to have a couple of mentions of non-water soluble silicons that industry have reacted to the feedback from the community, uh, from the customers. They developed a for formulation for a water soluble silicons. So some of the most popular examples of non-soluble silicons are right here. I'm not going to be pronouncing some of them, but these are the common offenders that are commonly found in a drugstore formulations and shampoo. And having said that, actually, even the fancier brands tend to use the silicon sometimes. So be careful when you're shopping online, it actually is very easy. You can just look at the ingredient list and see whether it contains silicons or not. More commonly, it's found in your conditioners and in your hair masks especially the, the type of mask that you apply in the lens of your hair. If you're curious right now, you can pause this video and grab a bottle of conditioner and check out whether it contains any of these silicones. Now let's talk about the water-soluble silicones, which were developed as a result of the industry reacting to customer feedback to and just general understanding how silicones and hair care work. These are some of the examples of the water-soluble silicones that are found more and more increasingly more, especially in more of a high-end range of products. So again, if you're curious, you can pause and grab that uh, bottle of conditioner or hair mask and the leave-in treatment to see if any of them are here. Interestingly, these are supposed to be water-soluble, but for example, with a cyclomethicon, a silicon that has been found initially as a water-soluble, later found out that it actually isn't soluble, so it does still causes the product buildup. And it kind of like that leads us to explanation of what is a water-soluble silicon is, is the one that can be sold in water, and that means that it wouldn't cause any product buildup. Now, having said that, every hair cuticle is different, so you need to understand first for yourself whether you're willing to kind of embark on the journey of leaving the silicones out of your hair care because it is a journey you can for example start with just abandoning the non-soluble silicones first and then move to the products with the water soluble silicone so it's kind of going to be a gentler transition for your hair and then ultimately moving completely to the products that don't contain silicones so this is completely up to you now also having said that with the kind of the popularity of a curly girl method where um, people are encouraged to leave the silicones entirely from the hair care products. In line with that, I think personally, I use conditioner that doesn't contain silicones because I found that even though it was harder for me to leave the, my conditioner that had the silicones and the kind of my hair was nice and shiny for some time, and then it was looking limp very quickly, like 24 hours after washing. It's not very healthy to having to wash your hair every day, but ultimately that can be your hair journey where you train your hair slowly, you wean it off the silicones over time. So not going completely cold turkey, abandoning kind of 
throwing away all the products that you have. Keep them what you have, finishing it up, and the next time you're shopping for your hair care product, make sure that these or that type of silicones are water soluble ones as a start and see how your hair reacts. Really observe how it behaves and give it a couple of months. You know, don't give up after a month's time to say, oh, this, this shampoo or this conditioner doesn't work for me, my hair looks horrible, because your hair needs that adjustment. And having said that, they are a natural way to remove a product a small product buildup, and that is with the apple cider vinegar. And having said that, of course, especially if you've been using silicones quite heavily, and make sure that you also consider your hairspray, by the way, because those also contain silicones too. That if you've been using it for a while, you will need to use a clarifying shampoo to get rid of the buildup before you move to the next type of product, because otherwise you're going to end up with a, with a lot of random product buildup in your hair. So that's one matter. And then finally, when you are uh, going into the journey of completely abandoning silicones, make sure that you have a lot of patience. Your hair will pay off in heaps because it's no longer going to be suffocated by the plastic film, but it's going to need some time to adjust. And that means that maybe for a couple of months, your hair is going to be unpredictable after a hair wash day. And maybe you will be super tempted to use some of the products that you got used to using. And on that note, I would strongly encourage you to look at some of the natural solutions. So for example, hair oiling. So after a shower, you can put some grapeseed oil. It's a lightweight oil that's suitable for majority of the climates, majority of hair types out there that will make your hair a little bit more manageable. Another thing to mention is that silicones are actually known to protect your hair against heat. And while it is very easy for me to say stop using heat tools and therefore you wouldn't be needing heat protectants, unfortunately this transition is going to take time if it's something that you want to explore. So if you are using a blow dryer or a hair straightener most days, you probably use a heat protectant and if you don't, you probably should. And there are other natural options available to use, so things like shea butter. It is almost as good as the silicon to protect your hair against heat. But I am very consciously saying almost as good because of course silicones were a better in protecting your hair against heat. But then if you to think about it, that if you are you're still burning your hair, you're still applying super high temperatures to your hair, whether it's blow drying or hair straightening, it's still not very good for your hair ultimately. So if you are up for a challenge, weaning your hair off your heat styling routine as well as silicone, so you will be needing less silicone rich products in order to protect your hair. This is something for you to understand and tune in and understand if it's something that you're willing to try. Your hair is most certainly will thank you for that. And then one last thing to mention about silicone buildups and hair growth. I think when we come to think about hair growth, we don't think about our scalp for some reason. It's like uh, when we buy a hair growth shampoo or hair growth conditioner, they always puzzle me because hair growth conditioner tend to be you know you apply it on your hair lens that's not where the hair is growing from however it is important to understand the role that silicones are playing in hair growth so as your hair is becoming more limp as you are continue using products with more silicones and then you have to use a clarifying shampoo to get rid of it your hair will become less and less healthy and that means it's going to dry out sooner it's going to look dull and limp and that lack of moisture in your hair as well is going to lead to more breakage and then as a result you are having to go to your hairdresser and having to or just doing it at home you will have to trim it more often therefore losing the length if you're trying to grow your hair out and then on the other side like i said if you're using hairsprays which is effectively applied on the roots of your hair most of the time or any sort of hair mousse anything that touches your scalp so other than trimming you also need to think about how the silicones affect your scalp if you have a product buildup from using hairsprays or any sort of hair serums, especially the one that you apply on your scalp, that's going to cause a product buildup. So this is something for you to consider. Product buildup will cause hair growth challenges because it effectively clogs your hair follicles. It can irritate the scalp. If you have an itchy scalp or if you have dandruff, Take a look at the type of hair products that you're using and see what type of silicones those products contain. I hope that this video has been helpful. If you are curious to find out more about how to understand your hair health better, feel free to check out our website, thehairfuel.com. We're always here for you to answer any sorts of uh, hair growth and hair health questions that you might have. And if you have any specific comments, if you want to share you know, your silicone-free journey when it comes to hair care, pop them in the comments below. 
uh, we'll be very happy to hear from you. And if this video resonated with you, if you've learned something new that you didn't know before, if you liked it, make sure to let us know and make sure to subscribe to us because we do release this video from time to time all aimed at educating people about hair growth, hair health, and hair science.